Hello, my name is Daniel King, and welcome to my play of the day from round three of the Istanbul Olympiad. Thirteen teams have a maximum score after three rounds. All the big favourites Russia, Ukraine, China, India, USA, Germany, and England, even England, who defeated Cuba 3 1 today, a very good result for them. But the game I've selected today is from the Netherlands Georgia match. Uh, Netherlands having a very tough time. They've already lost two matches. Why did I pick this game? Because basically it was the craziest game I saw today. I hope you enjoy it. So the game is Stelvagen against Shanava. Stelvagen has white. He played e4 and it was a modern defence and Stelvagen plays the most uncompromising move f4, putting all his pawns in the middle, and frankly I don't like white's uh, setup here, I don't think it really challenges white's centre. White can castle here, but Stelvagen played a new move, bishop f2, and not a bad idea. Simple idea is that the bishop comes out to this diagonal, and that's, yeah, that's a bit of a problem for black sometimes. And black played d5, and I think black should really be playing b6 and c5 here. Uh, but this just leads to basically a very nice French position where this bishop has already found an excellent square and white is ready to attack on the king side. And this bishop looks very poor on g7, just locked in by the pawn on e5. So I think things looking very good for white already. Okay, c5, black needs counterplay. h3, that's another controversial move I would say because okay I understand that black is fighting for control of the f5 square but it means it's now very difficult for black to castle on the king side it just reduces black's options so I'm very surprised about that move okay black took now there are some funny tactics here uh, after this well black is is seeking to exchange pieces here of course but, but white is having none of that and keeps the initiative. So black seeks counterplay, bishop d3, okay, normal developing move, and now we've already reached a critical moment. White could play, let's say, a little bit more positionally with bishop f2 here, and I think that white has the better chances. Um, looks, looks very good indeed, but white got all excited and went for it with f5. Now I completely understand this, it seems to me to be quite justified when the king sits in the middle of the board. You know, you want to try and find ways to open up the position. Let's have a look at and see what the idea is. Black took. Now, here, bishop f5 is an interesting move. And if g takes, then queen takes d5, hits two pieces. That's not a bad idea for white. But white has something else in mind. After g takes, knight takes bishop. Now, of course, if queen takes knight, then bishop f5, and black is probably okay. But white's idea was to flick in this intermediate move, this Zwischenzug. If the knight moves, then we take on g7, and white is obviously doing very well. So the bishop has to move, and then queen takes knight, and white is ready to capture that pawn on d5. So not a bad idea. And, of course, the f6 pawn could be uh, very useful in, a, in an attack. Bishop f5. Okay, well, I think if queen take, if uh, castles kingside, then knight takes, and it's clear that white is doing very well indeed after knight e7. So black has to try and stir things up in this position. White could compromise here and play queen e2. I think that's not a bad move, but white went for it with queen takes d5, and this does look extremely dangerous. The knight is on prees. Black's king isn't yet safe. So what did black do? Well. This is a very interesting move. Already this is possible. Bishop takes pawn check. If king takes, of course, there's the knight fork. So white's king goes in the corner. And now castles king side. And this is very unclear indeed. What's the score? Well, it's even at the moment. White can take this. Now, if black just takes the rook on d1, I think white is doing very well. But there's a funny idea here. Black could play here, and I, I find this position very difficult to assess. After this, 
white has problems here, but white can give up the queen, and this reaches such an odd position, and now e6. Now, of course, that can't be taken because of the check f7 and bishop takes queen. So basically, after e6, white forces a pawn to e7 and has a rook and a knight against the queen. What is going on here? I haven't got a clue. Very interesting possibility, those, but I can understand why black perhaps didn't want to go in for that. Okay, what did black do? Black castle kingside and just gave up the knight. Well, white doesn't have to take this. Maybe it's better in this position to play queen d3 and then let the knight into d5, and I have a feeling that white is better there. Okay, it's not so clear. Um, you know, the bishop is pretty good on e6, but I feel that white should be better. But white did not back down and played queen takes knight and now let's see what happens okay rook c8 queen b7 could have been played but i think this is interesting although black is a whole rook down here i think he has enough play for example here and i have a feeling this position should just be a draw king a1 queen c3 check is just a draw and after this, probably white should just repeat. There's a very strange idea here. Um, after, okay, after this, this will be a draw. But if white plays and say queen g2, take a look at this, bishop f4. Beautiful move. Black's a whole rook down. But this bishop comes in, threatens the rook, threatens to take on e5. Reminds me a bit of a dragon variation, actually. But I think black is doing well here. So queen b7 is possible, but I think should lead to a draw. White played queen d6, and suddenly he's in trouble. Let's see what happened. Now bishop takes c2 check is very powerful indeed. Let's see. If king takes, queen a4 check, and this force is mate. If the king goes back, we just take everything on d1, and then rook c1 is mate. Okay, so after bishop takes, the king has to come in the corner. And then we take on d1. Now, maybe white had seen this and thought that after e6, things were still going his way. For example, if the rook comes back to defend, then just rook takes bishop and, well, white is even material up in this position. Or pawn takes, well, obviously f7 check is winning. But black had a tremendous resource here. Well, more than a resource, actually a winning move. Rook takes knight, and it's incredible that white can take on f7 with either queen or pawn, but it has no effect. Let's take a look. So, if queen takes, then the king just goes in the corner. Everything's fine. And pawn takes was played, and again, the king goes in the corner. And there's no big follow-up here for white. There's a threat play rook c1 mate and this is this is desperate so white found bishop g5 okay now this can't be taken that would be disastrous and now f8 is is winning is mating but bishop b3 wins and here and now a very cool move from black bishop f8 just blocking the f pawn and if the queen moves there's well, for example, disaster on uh, a3. I'm sure there are other moves as well. Okay, white tried knight e5. This is still completely crazy. Looking to get in on g6, but bishop c2 is a very cool move indeed. Defending g6 and setting up potentially new threats on a3. And at this moment, white actually resigned. Okay, let's see what might happen. The bishop might come back to c1, but then just rook back and after well let's say queen here bishop f5 black is a rook up and there's no more attack for white or what about rook g1 okay well then we can actually take and maybe just rook e8 black is too much material up well a crazy game and it seems to me that uh, black just saw a bit further than white ahead, but well, there were some great tactics there. I hope you enjoyed that. Round four tomorrow, and I think we're going to see some great clashes between the top teams. I look forward to it. Hopefully, see you for the next play of the day. Thanks very much for watching.